welcome you all to this class on hsc first paper english dear students in today's class uh, i will explain lesson 3 of unit 11 the title of unit 11 is uh, two sum troubles and the title of lesson 3 is imaginary trouble now you all know that uh, uh, this is um, you know all about tours and travels there can be different types of tours and travels some of them are real and there can be also imaginary travel so in today's lesson we will uh, read a kind of imaginary travel and from the title you can easily guess you can easily understand that we are going to have a kind of travel which is not real but which is uh, imaginary and uh, let's uh, go there is a kind of warm up activity and this warm up activity is just to make the students prepared for the lesson and to make them you know accustomed to the classroom situation since we are not in the real classroom right now so uh, still you can discuss things with your classmates with your friends with your family members if possible so what does it ask you to do it asks you to do discuss any travel account account means a kind of discussion or narration that you have read in english or bengali and the places it describes imagine you are walking in a street in london or new york how is your experience different from that of walking in the roads or streets of your town or city so uh, it asks you to imagine yourself in a street of london or in new york so it are, it is asking you to imagine yourself in a situation uh, which is not real which is uh, uh, not which doesn't happen to you or which has not happened to you so you have to imagine the situation and you will definitely uh, get a kind of difference between your experience uh, with the familiar situation that you come across in your everyday life on the streets of your hometown or city so what kind of difference you will uh, have in your imaginary uh, you know traveling or your imaginary you know uh, tour in or traveling or walking on a street of new york and london um, and uh, you're walking on a familiar street or road in your city so when you will discuss these things with your classmates or with your friends things will be much easier for you to understand and it will prepare you to understand it will prepare you to get <coughs> much friendly to the lesson that you are going to study travel can be we, we have not yet started the passage so you, we are just uh, reading the introductory part of the lesson so this introductory part is also very important sometimes what we do that we skip the introductory part and the problem if we skip the introductory part is that a, we we cannot or we don't get uh, sufficient background knowledge or background ideas about the lesson there are lessons which are directly connected with uh, different pieces of literature or different uh, descriptive writings or narrative writings or different sort of experiences or uh, tours and travels by people or by writers uh, uh, so when uh, you start a lesson so if there is uh, something like this i mean introductory passages or a kind of introduction so it's always suggested that you read it uh, attentively minutely so travel can be uh, so this is something like uh, that it's a kind of introduction so travel can be imaginary as well so we are reading to some travels uh, but travel can be real travel can be imaginary as well so travel can be imaginary authors uh, would sometimes make imaginary voyages to strange places and draw pictures of people and places so sometimes we also notice that there are some authors uh, who prefer to write on strange and imaginary voyages say for example voyage to the mars or voyage to other planets as well and uh, you must have heard the name of jules verne you know uh, so if you read the books by jules verne you will see that he also uh, wrote imaginary type of you know science fictions kind of science fictions so he uh, you can also term him as one of the early uh, writers of science fictions and in jules verne's books uh, you, you will notice strange and imaginary voyages to different places different uh, you know uh, countries different uh, situations 
and under the sea, uh, so uh, around the world in 80 days. So there are different types of ideas. There are different types of travels, imaginary travels in Jules Verne's books. So if you are, if you feel interested in, if you feel interest, uh, then you can read his books. And uh, manners and morals. So there, are, if you read the imaginary travels, you will also come across imaginary uh, manners or morals and other things. So if you read travel, I mean real uh, uh, travels or experiences of people uh, who are traveling in uh, really in different places, then you will also have practical knowledges of different places and things. Jonathan Swift. So in today's class, we are going to now we are just coming to the point in today's class, we are going to have ideas about um, Gallifer's, the Gallifer's Travels. So Gallifer's Travels is a famous book by Jonathan Swift. We all know that. Uh, you must have heard the name of this book and you must have heard the name of Jonathan Swift as well. So in bracket, uh, you know, his uh, the year he was born and uh, the year he died. And Gallifer's Travels was published in uh, 1726. So it's uh, 300, almost 300 years. And you, you will understand when I will explain things to you, you will understand that how, you know, uh, this book can also be treated as a book of our time. Because there are many issues, there are uh, many incidents, uh, happenings, there are uh, many experiences uh, which are very much similar to the experiences uh, which are happening in today's life, in today's world, I must say, is an example of imaginary travel. So Gallifer's Travels, uh, we are not going to read the entire novel, Gallifer's Travels. This novel is divided into four books. So each book is also, uh, you know, it has got many pages. So we are just going to read a single chapter of a particular book. Uh, so uh, Swift created a fictional traveler, fictional means not real, a fictional traveler named Lemuel Gallifer. So the name of uh, the person uh, who is not real, uh, he is Gallifer, he is also fictional, that means imaginary character, a ship doctor. So by profession, Gallifer was a ship doctor and who visited the lands of the Lilliputs and brought Dingnags and the islands of Laputa. So this Gallifer, who was by profession a ship doctor, uh, in his different visits, uh, imaginary visits, obviously, imaginary tours, obviously, uh, he visited the land of Lilliputs, the land of Brobdingnags, the land of island of Laputa. So these are all fictitious places inhabited by imaginary people. So these are not real places, these are fictitious places. But remember one thing, we are saying that these are not real places, but symbolically, allegorically, so uh, these places definitely represent some real places of the world. But Jonathan Swift did not mention the names of the real places directly. But indirectly, these places, I mean Lilliputs, the land of Lilliputs, the land of Brobdingnags, Laputa, they indirectly they represent different places of the world. We will uh, try to understand that. So it is called a kind of allegory. So uh, Jonathan Swift's, uh, you know, uh, Gallifer's Travels is a kind of allegory. You know, allegory is a kind of literary term which is applied for a particular kind of text that can be uh, novel, that can be poetry also, uh, which uh, in which you will have two stories or two plots. There is a surface story and there is an underneath story. So uh, this introductory passage is giving us ideas about the superficial story. And there is an underneath story. That means beneath the superficial story, there is an underlying story. So if you read the superficial story, if you just come across the incidents uh, that takes place in the land of Lilliputs, Brobding, Nax, and Laputa, you will simply treat Gallifer's Travels as a kind of, uh, I mean, a fairy tale type of book. But it's not at all a fairy tale type of book. It's a very serious book dealing with very grave and serious issues like politics, like, I mean, criticism uh, of politics, uh, science, and not only that, even criticizing human nature, human beings as well. So it criticizes almost everything. And, but particularly, but basically, mainly 
the main target is politics and political situation, the greed of the politicians and the greed of human beings as well. Uh, so these are the targets of criticism. So these are all fictitious places. Uh, why I told all these things? Because uh, apparently we are saying, superficially we are saying, these are fact fictitious places. The characters are fictitious characters. The characters are imaginary characters. But remember that these imaginary characters definitely represent uh, some real characters. These imaginary lands definitely represent real lands of the world. So, uh, there are two types of stories. There is, I have already said, there is a superficial story and there is an underlying story. Uh, then that's why it is called an allegory. The travels here, however, carry a serious purpose. The last sentence uh, clarifies everything. They reveal truths about human nature. For example, even today, human life is poisoned by evils such as racism, religious extremism, bigotry, etc. So now it, it, it's getting clearer to us that what does the text deal with? What does the passage deal with? The passage deals with serious issues like racism, religious extremism, and bigotry. Bigotry is also a kind of strong biasness for or against an ideal or idealism. So racism, religious extremism, so extremism, bigotry, so these, uh, you know, make lives very complex and uh, critical and um, that's why this is a text uh, which criticizes against uh, these sort of things. Gulliver, during his visit to the land of the Lilliputs, who are humans, only about six inches tall, discover how strongly prejudiced the Lilliputians are about certain things and how this help nurse a head trade and foment uh, fratricidal war. Now, you see that the lesson we are going to read, the lesson uh, we will read now, it, it's a, an idea about the lesson, that we are going to read a lesson in which we will see uh, human beings who are six inches high. So just uh, uh, think about it, that human beings who are six inches high, and they are known as Lilliputs, so Lilliputians. So these Lilliputians, though their height is six inches, but these people, they have also, they nurse, that means they harbor, they nurture the feelings of hatred and uh, the feelings of, you know, uh, a kind of animosity against uh, people or human beings, fratricidal war, that means, you know, a, a kind of war uh, against the uh, same kind of people or against, you know, uh, your neighbors, against your brothers, that means, uh, there is a kind of war between very two close groups. So this sort of war we notice in this uh, in the lesson we are going to read. So have trade, you understand what is have trade and foment means it, it, it instigates, you know, it instigates and uh, it, it inspires. Uh, so uh, You know, uh, foment, I say that uh, it inspires, it instigates. And the meaning of fratricidal, you know, uh, you know it's a kind of uh, animosity among uh, people of the same group or same class. Uh, I, I say that uh, animosity between the, uh, in, in the, in the same family, in the same group, in the same country. So these are the things we notice uh, in the land of Lilliputs. Though their height is uh, six inches, uh, they, they still nurture the feelings of hatred. Uh, so that is uh, very important and that is uh, very significant. Now, Gallifer, a man of average height. Now, Gallifer is not six inches high. He is a man of average height, gets a new insight into the pitiness or hollow, pitiness means so hollowness, emptiness of human nature. Emptiness, hollowness of human nature. When he arrives at the land of Lilliputs, who are small not only in size, but also in their thoughts and perceptions. This is very important. So the Lilliputians are six inches high, but Gallifer is a man of average height, for example, just uh, six in, uh, feet or something like that. 
So when he reaches the land of uh, Lilliput, uh, what he observes that the Lilliputians uh, behave like common, uh, you know, the uh, common human beings of Gallifer's uh, country. The Lilliputians, though they are small in size, they have got the feelings of uh, trade. They also get involved in fight. They go, get involved in uh, conflict. And uh, this sort of problem Gallifer observes in the uh, in the minds of the uh, Lilliputians. And the Lilliputians are not only small in their size, but also small uh, in their thoughts and perceptions. This is sharp criticism, very, very sharp criticism. So the Lilliputians are, uh, you know, they are small not only in size, but also in thoughts and perceptions. Now we are going to start the passage. One morning we are reading a passage from Gallifer's Travels. This is a particular chapter and I said that the book is divided, I mean the novel is divided into four parts and this uh, lesson has been taken from one part. One morning about a fortnight after I had obtained my liberty. So Gallifer is narrating his experience in the land of Lilliput. So one morning about a fortnight after I had obtained my liberty. So a morning after 15 days, 14 or 15 days, fortnight, you know what does it mean. After a, uh, about a fortnight, half of month, I had obtained my liberty and he got liberty half a month ago. Real Russell, who is Real Russell? Principal secretary, as they style him. Real Russell is the principal secretary. As they style him means this is uh, the way the people of, I mean, the Lilliputians call this man. Real Russell, uh, the, the position Real Russell in, enjoys is principal, uh, the position of principal secretary. So, uh, Real Russell is the principal secretary of private affairs. Uh, this is how I have already said the people of uh, the land of Lilliputs, uh, they call this man. So, this man is uh, enjoying a very important position in the government. So, Real Russell came to the house of Gallifer. So, from this uh, we can understand, we can gauge that Gallifer was arrested by the Lilliputians earlier and uh, more you know uh, around 15 days have passed already uh, since his uh, arrest he was released uh, after his arrest but probably upon some conditions attended only by one servant and uh, Red Russell came to visit Gallifer and he was attended by a servant you will notice some uh, words starting with capital uh, now, now, over here, you see the house uh, starts with H, servant uh, with S. So, these are nouns, you know, uh, if you look at the part of speech, these are nouns. Um, house, it's noun, servant, it's noun, but it's not a proper noun. So, uh, in those days, uh, they, they, there was a tradition that when it was an important word, you know, they used to, uh, uh, you know, start the word with capital or capitalization. So capitalization uh, at that time was used uh, to identify not only nouns, sometimes you will see that some nouns are also missing capitalization and sometimes you will see some words which are not nouns still. Uh, they use uh, capital. So, this capital uh, words are used, the capitalization is used uh, to give a kind of prominence or a stress on the word. So, uh, in today's grammar, we don't allow, but since this text was written 300 years back, uh, that is why uh, you will face this sort of problem. So, don't mind. 
Now, uh, whether the distance and desired, I would give him an hour's audience. So, uh, he ordered his kit to coach, that means the person who drove the car, will just order that person to stay a little uh, distance away. And he came to Gallifer and he requested Gallifer that Gallifer should give him time because he required at least one hour to convey some message to Gallifer, which I readily consented to. This I is basically Gallifer himself. So Gallifer gave the consent that, okay, I am ready to listen to you. So what uh, you can, you want to say, please convey the message to me. On account of his quality. So uh, on account of his quality, it means that the man was, uh, man, uh, I mean, real wrestle was a man of quality. He possessed some quality and personal merits and realistal had also possessed personal merits that means uh, he was a man of quality and he was a nice man and Gallifer has got clear idea about real wrestling as well as of the many good offices he had done me during my solicitations at court and this real wrestle had also helped Gallifer when his case was going on in the court he was arrested at the beginning when he was captured by the Lilliputians on the seashore, they brought Gallifer to the court and in the court he was tried and there were solicitations, that means there was the court proceedings uh, and Gallifer requested the court to uh, give him release and he was released. But as I said earlier, that he was released upon some conditions and uh, this man, Rail Russell, had helped Gallifer when the case was going on in the court. I offered to lie down, so Gallifer said, well, I am lying down uh, that he might uh, the more conveniently reach my ear so that, uh, you know, Red Russell could come close to his ear and tell uh, what he wanted to, uh, what he uh, had in his uh, store to convey to Gallifer. But he chose rather to let me hold him in my hand during our conversation. So uh, you must have noticed by this time that most of the nouns, uh, they are starting with capitalization. And, uh, you know, Gallifer uh, proposed, uh, proposed in the sense that Gallifer asked uh, Red Russell that uh, he was lying down and asked Red Russell to come close to his ear. But Red Russell rather preferred uh, and asked Gallifer to lift him on his uh, palm and brought him close to uh, his uh, ear so that he could say or he could con uh, have, have a conversation with Gallifer. He began with compliments on my liberty. So at first the Red Russell uh, gave con congratulations or congratulated Gallifer on his liberty. I said he might pretend to some merit in it and he said that I also uh, pretend, that means uh, pretend uh, that uh, I have got some, you know, credit behind your release from the court, but I am not going to take that. But however, added that if it had not been for the present situation of things at court, but Rail Russell stressed on the fact that I would also be unable to uh, make you get release from the court unless the situation of the court was not critical. So, the complex situation of the court, the critical situation of the court must have helped Gallifer to get relief from the court or get release from the court. Perhaps I might not have obtained it so soon and if the situation of the court was not critical, probably Gallifer would not be released so soon. So there is a reason behind the quick release of Gallifer from jail. For said he, as flourishing a condition as we appear to be uh, to foreigners, we live under two mighty evils, a violent faction at home and the danger of an invasion by a most potent enemy from abroad. So what Real Bristol wanted to convey to Gallifer that they were facing serious troubles. Flourishing, that means uh, it was emerging, uh, it was uh, spreading branches and it was making the situation critical. So what critical situation they were facing? They were facing two evils 
simultaneously. One evil is the violent faction at home. So within their own country, they had a kind of problem. The Lilliputians, they were facing a kind of problem within their own state. And the danger of an invasion in, uh, by a most potent enemy from abroad. And there was the threat of being attacked by the neighboring country. Invasion, it means that to intrude by force or forcibly, to have a kind of entry using force. So these two evils they were facing. One evil, living within their own state. There was a conflict between two parties or two groups in their own country. I mean in the country of Lilliputs and there was a threat from the uh, from, uh, from outside the country and a potent enemy that means strong enemy. As to the first you are to understand that for above 70 moons past so you understand that they count days they count they don't count months they don't count you know uh, year they rather count the moons and 70 moons past. So that is how they count the uh, days and the months. There have been two struggling parties in this empire. So 70 months past, there were two struggling parties in this state of, uh, you know, Lilliputs. Under the names of Tramexon and Slamexon, from the high and low heels on their shoes, by which they distinguished themselves. So there were two groups. The name of one group was Tramexon, and the name of other, another group was uh, Slamexon. I repeat, the name was one group of uh, Tramexon and the name of other another group was uh, Slamexon. And these two groups were known by their heels of shoes. So this is a sharp criticism, you understand, that the dress, the shoes of the politicians could reflect their political identity or political adherence to a particular party. So the height of the hill of the shoes of the politicians, it represented uh, their political adherence to a particular party. So this is a sharp criticism. There was no division, I mean, I mean there was, uh, their adherence to a particular party was not based on the quality or principles or, uh, you know, other, uh, uh, you know, qualities or characteristics of the party. Rather, it was based, uh, you know, it, it was a kind of biasness. It was a kind of, you know, uh, extremism. It is alleged that the high hills are most agreeable to our system, uh, ancient constitution. So the high hills, they preferred the ancient constitution. So from this statement, we understand that they have two constitutions, one the ancient constitution and the other is the current constitution or the latest constitution. But however this be, His Majesty had determined to make use of only low hills in the administration of the government and all offices in the gift of the crown, as you cannot but observe, and particularly that is His Majesty's imperial hills are lower at least by a draw than any of his code. Now, the majesty means now the emperor, uh, today's emperor, or the emperor of the present time, he rather allows the low hills in his court. He has given all the important posts to the low hills and he has deprived the high hills and he has a preference for the low hills uh, or the supporters of low hills and he uh, hates the supporters, I mean, the uh, high hills. And you will understand, Rildressal is telling uh, Gallifer that you can easily identify our majesty's preference to low hills through, his, through the height of his shoe. That his shoe is at least uh, one drawer shorter. And uh, I told you earlier that their adherence to political party is reflected through, a, through their dress. So this is huge criticism. The animosities between these two parties run so high and these two parties, they, uh, you know, their animosity, their enmity is so high 
that they will neither eat nor drink nor talk with each other that they do not sit together they do not eat together they do not drink like the political parties of our country you see that they don't stay they cannot stay together we compute the tramexan or high heels so, so the tramexan are basically uh, high heels they maintain high heels of their shoes and through that they uh, they present their political identity that they are tramexan to exceed us in number and the high heels exceed that means their number is uh, you know higher than the number of low heels but the power is wholly on our side but reldressel says that the, though the high heels the surpass us in number but we possess the entire power we apprehend his imperial highness the heir to the crown to have some tendency towards the high heels but the son of today's emperor we apprehend we and we are afraid that the son or the heir to the emperor that means uh, who is going to be the next emperor he has got some preferences for the high heels because we can plainly discover one of his heels higher than the other which gives him a hobble in his gait we can easily notice that uh, the emperor son so the heir to the uh, emperor his heel is uh, one heel is higher than the other and hobble in his gait means that means sometimes he stumbles while walking so this is very very sarcastic you know this uh, this is straight criticism uh, against the attitude against the behavior of the lilliputians uh, who Uh, express their identity uh, through their uh, dresses now in the midst of this uh, intestine disquiets intestine disquiets means uh, internal uh, disquiets or internal problems we are threatened with an invasion from the island of blefusku so the name of the neighboring country is blefusku so we are also facing the threat of being attacked by the people of blefusku which is the other great empire of the universe and we think that there are only two great empires or two great countries in the world one is <clears throat> the land of lilliput and the other is blefusku almost as large and powerful as these of his majesty and we think that uh, this that country is also as large as our country for as to what we have heard you affirm that there are other kingdoms and states in the world inhabited by human creatures as large as yourself but we have never heard that there is any kingdom in the world except these two but you are saying that mr elrisel is telling galipo that you are saying that there are countries and you are also saying that there are people like you so we are astonished our philosophers are in much doubt but still our philosophers are not believing in your words and they think would rather conjecture that means they gaze that you drop from the moon and they are saying that you galifer you have dropped from the moon and you are not a man of the world you are one of the stars or you are simply a star who has accidentally dropped this on this world because it is certain that an hundred mortals of your bark could in a short time destroy all the fruits and cattle of his majesty's dominions because 100 persons like you can destroy everything of uh, the country so our philosophers are saying that you have come uh, from moon or you are a star who has accidentally dropped to this country besides our histories of 6000 moons make no mention of any other regions and our historians of 6000 moons past i have already said that they count according to moons and the movement of moons that our historians they say uh, they have never mentioned <coughs> any country except this two the lilliput at the blefusku which two mighty powers have so it also indicates the you know scanty knowledge the minimum knowledge of the lilliputians that they don't even know that there are countries beyond these two states of lilliputians and blefusku england and france basically they represent and the attitude of the lilliputians to present the attitude of the <coughs> political personality of england bepusku basically represents france 
As I was going to tell you, been engaged in a most, most obstinate war for six and thirty months past. So, <coughs> sorry. As I was going to tell you, been engaged in a most uh, obstinate war for six and thirty months past. So, a war took place thirty-six months uh, ago. It began upon this following occasion, and the war started. Uh, you know how the war started, how the conflict started in this country. Just have a look. It is allowed on all hands that the primitive way of breaking eggs before we eat them was upon the larger end. So the problem started, the enmity started, the conflict started in this country with the tradition of breaking egg. Earlier, the tradition was breaking egg on the larger end. You know, this is the larger end. And to break egg in this manner, we also when we break egg, we don't uh, break it on the larger side. We rather break it, uh, break it on the uh, shorter or smaller side in the middle. But the tradition of uh, the Lilliputians uh, was to break the egg on the larger side. So how silly is the issue? So it's it's a criticism against the uh, attitude, against the behavior of the Lilliputians. That uh, how, what kind of conflict can emerge? Can start from a, from silly things. Was up on the larger end, but this uh, present Majesty's grandfather, while he was a boy going to eat an egg and breaking it according to ancient practice, happened to cut one of his fingers. But today's emperor's grandfather, when he uh, was cutting an uh, egg uh, on the larger end, accidentally he cut uh, his finger and. Whereupon the emperor, his father, published an edict commanding all his subjects upon great penalties to break the smaller end of their eggs. So after this incident, the father of the emperor, he made a rule, made a law that from now onwards, all the people of the land of Lilliputs they have to break egg upon the smaller end. But the Lilliputians, many of the Lilliputians protested against it. Now, what does this silly incident indicate? This silly in this incident indicates that, you know, great conflicts can start on silly issues. So this sort of conflict, this sort of war is also present in today's world. So that is why this book is still very important in, in the contemporary world of today's society. The people so highly resented this law that our history tell us, but the people of, uh, of the land of Lilliputs, they didn't like it and they protested. There have been six rebellions raised on that account. So after this incident, there were six rebellions wherein one emperor lost his life, but one emperor had lost his life, another his crown and one emperor lost his power. These civil commotions were constantly fomented by the monarchs of Lepusco and this conflict was being inspired and encouraged by the neighboring country. And when they were quelled, the exiles always fled for refuge to that empire. And when the people failed or when uh, the protesters of this tradition, uh, when they were forced, they took exile to the land of Blefusku. That means and they went to the land of Blefusco and they took shelter over there. Exile means, you know, uh, being exiled to another country. And refuge means to take shelter to another country. And it is computed that 11,000 persons have at several times suffered death. And from the traditional breaking egg, 11,000 people have died. Rather than submit to break their eggs at the smaller end, they did not, despite losing, they lost their life, but still they did not accept the tradition. Many hundred large volumes have been published upon this controversy. Many books have been written on this controversy. But the books of the big Indians have been long forbidden and the whole party rendered incapable by law of holding employments. And the books have been, uh, you know, uh, censored. And uh, people who protested this law, they have been deprived of the position in the government. So this is the uh, lesson uh, that we find 
in our book regarding Gallifer struggles. So through this uh, lesson or through this uh, incident, what uh, you know, what we understand from this incident, we understand that sometimes great wars, great uh, enmity, great animosity, uh, you know, loss of lives, war, take place on silly issues. Jonathan Swift criticized the people of the land of Lilliputs that not they, they were small not only in terms of their physical size, but also they are small but also intellectually. And they were mean-minded. And they also released Gallifer on conditions. And they were full of, they were people who nourished uh, had trade. And they were people who were pernicious. They killed one another. And, uh, you know, through the incidents of breaking egg, either on the larger or on the smaller part, the silly issue, the silly issue of wearing uh, shoes with either high or low heels in order to uh, identify their political, uh, in order to show their political identity are things uh, which are really attacking the political personalities and the political, you know, ideology of the people of England of that time. And uh, we are not going to discuss question answer in today's class because I know that after such a long discussion, it's not possible to concentrate on the question answer or any other exercise. This, this was a tough passage. That's why I didn't go for any exercise like multiple choice, like writing summary, like giving question answers or flowchart writing. I didn't go for those options because it was a tough passage to understand. I hope that you will read this passage again at home. And in our next class, we will start either a new lesson or we will do other exercises. Thank you very much for today's class. Stay safe and stay at home.